It's Art here from Vibe Performance and we are at the product development site. So on a lot of the videos that you guys see that we put together, they're all shot here. Today, it's a little bit special. We got together with the guys from Speed Academy. Hello. There's Peter. And we're gonna be taking these two cars and building headers for them. Well, not myself, but Jay over here is gonna be building a header for Connie, the Celica, and Aaron, my boy is going to be building a header for my car, the BMW 2002. So over the next few weeks, stay tuned. You guys are going to be seeing the two different methods of how these two guys put together two different headers for two different cars. Which one will you like more? To break the ice of Pete and Dave, we led them to an address we thought would make them feel more comfortable when dropping off their car. As soon as they got their car into the shop, they got to work right away. Naturally, Jay busted out his 3D scanner and started scanning away the underside of their car and their engine bay so that he can begin this header build via computer modeling. We're gonna take the uh, low-tech approach on this one. We're not gonna use any kind of CAD software or any kind of fancy computers to design our header. We're gonna use a little bit of imagination and uh, I'm gonna ask Art what he wants for that header and, and I'm gonna try and take his idea and turn it into something physical uh, using the material we already have. So Art, tell me. Would you have a mind for a header? Yes, Aaron. All right, so to keep everything within the theme of things, uh, I wanna keep the car period correct. So at the time, there were some really cool uh, E10 and E21 chassis that had these swoopy style wave looking headers. So what I think we should do is, is have the header swoopy, swoopy, swoopy wave looking wave header. Looking header. <laughs> you just drop in and just smack the lip, whoop, drop down. Snap, ah, and then after that, you just drop in, you just ride the barrel and get pitted, so pitted. Like back. What do you think about that? Ah. The BMW is fairly original for the most part. It runs, it starts. As you can tell, that exhaust does not have a healthy sound. The stock header is less than desirable. It's clearly time to upgrade the entire exhaust system. This thing is rusty, it's got holes, it's got no flex in it, so it needs to go. Let's start by cutting out what we don't want, which is pretty much everything. Aaron, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just doing a quick 3D scan of this engine bay. So we're just gonna quickly hop to the office. Uh, this is Aaron's desk. This is where he spends most of his days. So Aaron, what do you, what do you got here for me? You're, you're building a flange I see here. So huh, this is the one item that we did have to use uh, some computer technology to develop. Uh, this is uh, our model for our head flange, so we're going to send this off to have a laser cut, and then the rest of the stuff we're going to use our imagination for. All right, so speaking of imagination, um, you picked out a lot of uh, parts for my car already, and I know you used the website earlier. Yeah, so we're going to use some, some UJ bends. We're going to use some collectors here. We're gonna use some spring tab kits to hold those collectors together. Uh, so there's all kinds of different stuff that we're gonna be. Now, I guess the question I gotta ask you is, uh, how do you know what you're ordering? Like, I mean, you got your sizing picked out. How did you figure that all out? Uh, well, I measured the exhaust port shape and I wanna have a tubing that's gonna match closely to that size. So that comes out to about an inch and a half. If I take some inch and a half stainless tubing, I should be able to squeeze it into the shape of that port and it should be a pretty close match to fit through it. So I'll be able to weld it from the inside. So 
So that's going to be our primaries is inch and a half. And then uh, our secondaries probably be inch and three quarter. Cool. All right, well, let's get to work. Let's get to the shop. Let's get going. All right. To build this header, for material, I've got some inch and a half and inch and three quarter UJ bends. Everything's 304 mandrel bent stainless. I've also got some collectors. I'm using two collectors that are inch and a half and one that is inch and three quarter. So I'm gonna be doing a four into two into one design. Then I have some spring tab kits to hold my piping into my collectors. I've got a V-band for the outlet of the collector. And I'm gonna add this little transition cone to go into our two and a half inch exhaust. I'm also gonna be adding one of our saddle style O2 bungs in case Art wants to do some tuning after this is all installed. I start cutting pipes so I have some pieces to work with so I can get a visual idea and a sense for the flow path of each runner as it's gonna be coming out of the exhaust flange. I've got a pretty tight space to work with so I wanna make sure that everything's gonna fit and not run into any clearance issues. So I have a lot of space at the front of the engine bay here for this header. I've got a lot of space up high um, and I need to keep in mind where my collectors are gonna sit kind of a little further back behind the subframe, aiming down underneath the car. My idea is to have that runner come forward and then curl back over top. And then the number two, the number two I want, to cur it's gonna curl down and underneath. And then number three is gonna come out and then follow this line and kind of follow this curl a bit and then curl back underneath and number four will probably do the same thing. And then I'll have my collectors back here where they all join together and then run to uh, underneath the car. You don't really know what it's gonna look like until you start putting some pieces into the space you have available. Unless of course you have a, you know, a $30,000 scanner This way, we're, we're just uh, cutting, cutting and fitting and welding. That's part of part of fabricating. Sometimes, uh, you know, CAD work, yeah, that's part of fabricating too. But not everybody has access to the those kinds of tools. Think about it. Way it's too much. also about winning. So you know what we should do. It's yeah. No, for me, it's about it's about the competing and having fun and you know trying to make Jay cry. Most of the mocking up can be done by hand with some carefully placed alignment references with a marker for tack welding. Once marked, it can be tack welded together on the bench. It's a lot easier welding on a bench than inside a crowded engine bay. It's time to test fit it back in the car. What I'll probably do though is Mark where I want to cut that. This is an off cut piece from one of my UJ bends, right? And I don't want to, I want to use it as an estimate. So I know this is a 45 degree bend. So I'm going to hold it underneath here. And wow, that's really close already. I'm happy with how my number one and number two runners are starting to flow. I wanna introduce the third runner and make sure that it's gonna follow kind of the same line. I want kind of like a parallel line design going there. So right now, yeah, just I'm eyeballing where 
I think I need to make my cut. I'm trying to hold this parallel to that runner. There's a guide. And then I'm just trying to hold uh, the position of the bend over top of the port, the number three port, which is directly underneath it. And then that's gonna kinda estimate where I'm gonna cut it. I'll make a cut and see how it looks. So this cuts a little bit off, a little biased towards one side. So I, I can still use this piece for another bend somewhere else. Something like that. I just need to cut this now. Keep in mind that's going to be inset inside the flange. I can take this just as a. So I will cut that probably shorter back. So that's going to go something like that. And this guy's gonna sit somewhere around there. I'm gonna sh shape this so I can fit it inside the flange. Right now, it's, it's probably ideal uh, in the position it's at sitting on top of the flange. So it may draw it in a little bit too far and I may not be able to use it if it pulls it too close to this number two runner. But if that's the case, then I, I still have the opportunity to use it for number four because I want generally the same angle coming out of the the head flange for both of those two runners. This will be the, the first step in making it match the port shape. But once I get it generally close and I'm able to fit it in there, I'll tack weld it and then I'll use the, the two ball peen hammer method to do the corners to push them out to match the port on the flange. I like that, that looks good so far once we get that number four. so. So this, I'm gonna have it curl, and I'm gonna try and get it in this, area, like so that it curls underneath, like underneath these two a little bit, like so it's, you know what I mean, and then sweeping back to fall, to line up with this one. These are the primaries. Um, Art wanted a real aesthetic look to it, so I felt the idea to kind of bring all the runners forward and then curl back underneath, uh, and then the collectors will sit underneath the back of the number four cylinder there, and then they'll turn down to the rest of the header where it goes into a single. So it's a 4 2 1 design. But, um, Nice long primaries, big, big radius bends. Try and line them up and make it look kind of aesthetically pleasing. So he seems to be happy with it so far. It's pretty dope, man. Let's see where it goes. Okay, so you envisioned all of this before, like when you were- I had an idea, I had, I, yeah, when I first looked at the compartment, I had the idea to swoop the, bring them up and forward and then just basically curl them back underneath so that they're gonna go into collectors further back, right? So it gives you a nice long primary for the exhaust to all flow uh, before it merges together. Bigger radius, right? It's gonna have a little bit better flow than a tighter radius would uh, between bends. So if I can keep a minimum of welding to each runner, then that's gonna make 
less work for me welding and uh, it's going to make it more durable because there's going to be less less welds in it right less less chances for cracking this runner is a little bit misaligned it doesn't match the angle as well to the rest of them so i've already marked where i want to cut it and i'm going to um, put a part bend there and aim it a little a little bit differently but i'm going to take this off of the car now and then I'm going to put it on the bench and then I'm going to try and line up and pair my, my one and four cylinders together into a collector and I want to have the pipes come down underneath this number four cylinder and then have two and three do the same thing. So we want these somewhere around here. You want to have access to these to be able to disassemble it. You don't want this piece to be too big because then it'll be difficult to get it in and out of here. So probably somewhere around this area. But if I keep these all together like this, right? I can go, I can change this, pull these. If I align these pipes properly, I'll be able to pull these collectors off and put a single four into one if I wanted to change it between a four to one and a four into one. So you can see, uh, that angle's a little bit off on this one here, right? So I need to, I wanna straighten it out a little bit so that it's kind of more parallel with this one. But this, these two need to join together. So they're gonna come down and go like this. And then these two need to join together and they're gonna kind of come down and go side beside it. So I may need to cut this one as well. I don't know for sure, but this I probably won't have to. I'll just add another bend. But I'm going to do this part uh, on the bench. I'll, I'll put a couple pieces together, try and line these two up first, and then I'll test fit it again. So we're going to wrap up this episode here. In the next episode, I'm going to continue on with those primaries, get them into our merch collectors, and continue on with this header for the header build-off. And if you haven't had a chance yet, go head over to the Speed Academy channel so you can see what Jay's up to with his computer modeling and his 3D scanning. <laughs> Fancy shenanigans with David Peter. So, see you guys on the next one.